Are you frustrated by trying to constantly manage all of your ad campaigns and not really knowing where to check for the most important aspects of them? Well, it's a lot simpler than a lot of people think, and typically you don't even need to use bulk sheets or bulk files, anything like that. When you're doing your ad optimizations, you just need to look for some very key areas in the ads to know where to get the most juice flowing for what you're trying to accomplish. Typically speaking, when you're looking at your ad campaigns, a cost obviously is going to be a huge, huge target. ROAS is another target. But what are the actual metrics you should be looking at and trying to understand on a regular basis when checking through your advertising? So we'll go over exactly all of that today. We have an ad account right here that we're going to be going through and showing the areas for when I'm trying to do a very quick five to 10 minute audit, I look at to understand how the overall account is performing. So some key factors first and foremost for this account the goal a cost for the account is 30 percent every single month the spend amount that we want to go for is ten thousand dollars so for every 30 days we're going to be trying to get around 30 percent a cost and ten thousand dollars in sales you can see right here that i am currently at the 30 day mark so i have it over the last 30 days we have our a cost at 32 percent, so slightly above what our actual target a cost is and then we are slightly below our ten thousand dollar budget for the month so where do we start when we're looking at this first and foremost we're going to come down to our campaigns and we are going to filter by active status enabled we only want to be looking at our currently enabled campaigns so what's the first area that i'm always going to be looking for well we're going to do another filter and we're going to do almost or out of budget this is going to give us all of the campaigns that are almost or out of budget or have consistently been out of budget for this time frame. So we, you can see we have one right here. And when I'm going to look at this, I'm going to see, OK, how are we actually doing on this campaign? You can see our A cost. It's above our A cost goal. So we already have a high A cost here. Our budget, our daily budget is eight dollars, pretty low. It's recommending 40. So let's look into the campaign and see what we can do. The point of this is to try and make sure that any of the actual uh, products or anything that we are doing have specific budget rules. So we want to see, OK, our placements, that's not our problem. So we can go in. Let's go into our mixed products, open that up. And we will see here. Let's look at our targeting. So for our targeting, you can see we are a budget for all of these. Why? The primary purpose, it seems like, is that we just have really, really high bids. So overall, our actual bid cost is going to be really high, whereas our budget, if you remember, is at $8, where our bid in some areas is as you know high as $7. So for a campaign like this, typically we're high, high A cost. I would not look at opening up the budget too much. We can add a little bit to it, but more than likely than not, what's going to happen here is we're going to end up having... Uh, just continued high a cost on a campaign such as this. So for this situation, I would probably just leave this as is, keep a low budget, maybe up the budget slightly, and then have a little bit less and break out some of these keywords. As you can see, we have one keyword in particular that's just doing really, really well. So I would probably break this out into its own campaign and go from there. Cool. So that's first step. We checked our uh, budgets. We know we have one. We know the solution to it. What's next after you check your uh, budget? Well, we're going to check for some wasted ad spend. So how do you go about finding wasted ad spend? Easiest way at the end of the day is that we know what our A cost is supposed to be. So let's do that first. So any A cost that is greater than 30 percent, let's apply that. And we have some campaigns here. So you can see we have some campaigns that over the last three days are running even above 100 percent, 200 percent in some cases. Right. So you're looking through a campaign or for through an account for the first time through all the campaigns and try and see where can we make the biggest impact on all of these campaigns. This is a great, great area. The reason for this is that we can now notate down. We have about 40 active campaigns that are above our a cost goal. What does this do for us? Well, typically speaking, even though we are close when we look at, let's say, our overall of active 32 percent for the month. Just because we are at that 32%, almost at 32%, doesn't mean that we don't have campaigns that we can actively look at changing. So what is the point of this? This gives us our top of the line campaigns that we can look at. Now, one thing I do like to do here is I look like to look at orders. So the reason for that is we can see this one 32%. It's our top of search campaign. 
and we have 419 orders. So this is a campaign where we might want to look at just bringing bids down slightly. Whereas if we go back, you can see some of these campaigns that are running at 215% as a single order. So not exactly a great campaign or a great metric to really show us whether or not a campaign is working and whether or not we're actually going. So I'm always going to go from an orders down standpoint. So for optimizations, it's not worth it to try and optimize one single campaign that we've only spent a certain amount on. So you'll see here we have 32, uh, you know, different orders here for 41%. Cool. All right. So now that we have that, what next? Well, we would go in, optimize this campaign. The way you're going to optimize campaign like this would be to open it up. And we're going to look specifically at our products again. We're going to come to our targeting and we're going to look to see why is it we're overspending? What are we actually spending on from a overall standpoint? So you can see here we have a couple of campaigns that or keywords that are over our a cost goal a couple that aren't so our primary one which is the majority of our orders is at 34 percent so what can we do here to make it more enticing well we can definitely lower bid our cost per click is 72 cents we're at 67 it's not necessarily the worst in the world we've already lowered it slightly and we're probably not performing as well here so you're going to want to look at your bid structure and then on top of that see if there's any bleeders in here so for instance this one where we've only had one order uh, over the course of, you know, the 30 days, but it's at 88%, we could look at potentially having this one put into a negation, right? It may not actually be helping us because it's had 20 different clicks with only one order. So that in my mind is something where we'd want to look at this keyword as being added to our negative targeting, uh, keywords. Now, after you've gone through, you now see where you are kind of bleeding a little bit on top of that, what you want to do for wasted ad spend is specifically look to see is there any areas where we don't have uh where we are spending so spend is greater than zero and then on top of that we don't have any orders so we'll do equals zero okay so we have a bunch of campaigns here uh that we have it looks like 47 then the last 30 days have no spend whatsoever so what do we do in this situation? So we can take this in a few different ways. These are going to be some very low hanging fruit campaigns for us to look at. You can see we've only spent about $271 in the last 30 days of our $10,000 budget. Typically what I like to see is no more than around a 5% wasted spend in total from this. So we're only at about 2.7% of our total wasted spend uh, for our campaigns here. So I'm not going to be overtly worried about these type of campaigns, but it is an area for most accounts to look at as you know, that's $270, you could be allocating to somewhere else. Now you can look at optimizing these or you can look at shutting these off. But in most cases for me, again, I'm not going to worry too much about them until we end up getting to around that 5% mark. Now, after that as well, uh, what you need to be looking at is some very specific things. So the next one we're going to be looking at is impressions. So impressions are going to tell us a lot of things. So we can look at our impressions, we want to do less than around 2500. Most good campaigns should have roughly 2500 as like a minimum threshold for impressions, there's no real minimum threshold at the end of the day, you could change that to 5000, you could change it to 500 doesn't really matter. It depends on what the campaign is actually doing. The point of doing impressions around 2500 for me, at the very least, is that it tells me what is actually doing anything, right? So we can see here we have around 58 campaigns. We're only seeing 50 of them that have less than 2,500 impressions. Now, the secondary part to this that we're going to add in would be uh, to see if it makes sense from an ACoS level. So you can see we have some orders here, but most of our ACoS for even these ones under 2,500 is pretty good. We have everything under 30%. Yes, we don't have some here that have even any uh, sales or impressions whatsoever. For ones that don't have any impressions, we'd want to go into them. And we'd want to try and understand what is the actual cause here. So we can go into one like this. Uh, and we can instantly go into our actual ad group. And then we will look at our targeting and see why is it we don't have a single impression? Well, it's because there's no targets. So we don't have anything enabled on this right now. So this right here is just an inactive campaign. That's really good to know. That means right now that we have it active, it's going to be showing up. 
we can just deactivate that. We don't have any active targets. There's a reason it doesn't have any impressions there. Perfect. Now we can deactivate and it's no longer going to be under our active status enabled. You can and disable a campaign from an ad group level as you just saw, but you can also enable it and disable it from the campaign level. I personally like to do the campaign level so we can have a high overview of the entire account. Now, next that I'm going to be looking at is specific campaign. This is a campaign that should be on every single account at all times, and that is a catch all campaign. I always like to see if we have one and we do have one and I want to make sure that it is performing adequately. So you can see we have good, good, good uh, impressions on this very high daily budget and our ACOS is below our ACOS goal. Perfect. We love that. We love to see that an auto catch all campaign is very low hanging fruit type of campaign that I suggest to have on every single one of the accounts that we're managing, whether, you know, it's just a small account, big account, you know, resale account does not matter. All auto catch all campaigns are fantastic. If you don't know when auto catch all is, I very much suggest going and checking out our channel. We have a couple of videos on them explaining how to set them up, why they're important and what the use case for them is. Now, past this as well, there is one kind of final area that I'm always going to check past the auto catch all. And it seems counterintuitive, but what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to look at a cost again, but instead of doing greater than I'm going to do less than now, why am I going to do less than the reason is, is again, our goal is for a 30% a cost. So if I am looking for campaigns in general that need optimization, yes, it makes sense for looking at the ones that are above our ACOS goal. We're not hitting metrics there and we need to bring it down, tailor it down, uh, add more negations and bid down on them. That makes a lot of sense. But on top of that, we want to look specifically to see how are we actually doing with campaigns that are way below. You can see right here, we have one, it's a just mixed ASINs and we're at 1% a cost 4% a cost. Now, why is this an issue? It's not necessarily the reason that I'm always going to be looking at campaigns like those is specifically because it's again, low hanging fruit. If you have an a cost goal, of, let's say 30%, and you're fine with your overall account being close to that goal of 30% good. But if you want to try and bolster as much sales as possible, you should also look at having your lower a cost campaigns raised up. There is no point in having a 5% ACoS campaign and a 200% ACoS campaign and then averaging them out, right? You want to make sure every single one of your campaigns is as close to the ACoS goal of 30% as possible. So in line with that, you want to make sure you go after them uh, and try and up bid them. You know, if you can get an extra 10, 20, 30% of sales for an extra, you know, 5% ACoS, that's fantastic. So Definitely when you are going through this, look at your low A cost campaigns. You can see we have, you know, 28 campaigns below our A cost goal, even though our A cost goal is, you know, 30%. Let's take some of these campaigns and we can definitely look at, you know, bidding up on them, you know, even for some of these exact ones. We have specific exact campaigns, uh, video campaigns even that we can easily go in, we can add some bid increases here and boom, we're going to have a great time. Even this one right here, we have 26 clicks on this. We have no orders from it, but it's very low cost per click. Our spend is fairly low, right? So this is one of the ones that would have come up in our wasted ad spend uh, that we're looking at. But on top of that, we just should be looking overall to see, hi, how can we actually improve this? Can we make it so that this is a really, really good campaign that hits our 30% ACoS goal and is increasing our sales? So when you're going through, these are all of the primary areas that I'm going to be looking at for a very quick audit overall. This should take less than 10 minutes, five preferably, if you are just quickly going through, should be able to mark down all of your campaigns. And if you don't wanna use bulk files, this is really the way to go. I can usually go through and understand very quickly where an account is at and where our low hanging fruit to really optimize the account is within under 10 minutes using these different strategies.